You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor, subscribe to the channel, leave your comments below, and be sure to smash that like button. You know, when we are in Nashville for SEC Football Media Days, my guess is um, certainly Brian Kelly is going to bring with him. We don't know the players that are going yet. My guess is Jaden Daniels is going to be one of them, and he'll have somebody on the offensive side and somebody on the defensive side. Maybe it'll be Mason Smith. Maybe it'll be Har Harold Perkins. We'll see. I'm not sure that we're going to see anybody at the cornerback position, but we have asked and sort of uh, wondered all throughout this offseason about that group. Because LSU has built the reputation as DBU for so many years. And the last two years have been pretty interesting in this respect. You lose two big-time transfers in Elias Ricks and Dwight McLaughlin. And your entire room last year was made up of transfers. It has not been common for LSU football to have a McNeese State transfer as a guy you're counting on at the cornerback position. You know who you count on at cornerback at LSU? Derek Stingley, Patrick Peterson, Morris Claiborne, Christian Fulton, five-star, 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 first-round pick. That's who LSU counts on at the cornerback position. Not, with all due respect, a guy that Brian Kelly struggled to remember his name, Colby Richardson, a.k.a. Cody Dickerson. But you had a bunch of transfers in Jarrett Bernard Converse and Makai Gardner who played well for LSU. And for whatever it's worth, LSU finished last season 32nd in the country in pass defense. Not terrible. That was, that was fourth among SEC teams. A&M was number one in the country last year in pass defense. Kentucky was number seven in the country. Bama was 17, LSU was 32. LSU was fourth best in the SEC in pass defense last year with 206 yards per game. Well, your entire secondary is gone now, except for LaTerrence Welch, who is a rising sophomore who hasn't played a ton, but you know, we'll see what that role may be for LaTerrence Welch moving forward. But what Brian Kelly and his staff did was they went and hit the transfer portal hard and added four guys. They added four cornerbacks who in some way are going to have to be major contributors. You had Deuce Chestnut from Syracuse, J.K. Johnson from Ohio State, Denver Harris from Texas A&M, and Zy Alexander from Southeastern. Of course, you got J.V. and Toviano coming in, the freshmen as well, that they're very high on. But I saw this today, and it made me go, huh. As we keep sort of wondering which of these guys in this cornerback room are going to be the ones that step up for LSU, maybe it's Deuce Chestnut, the Syracuse transfer. Maybe he's the best bet. A lot of people mention Denver Harris because he was the five-star. He was the, the top cornerback prospect in the country, the freak show athlete that everybody wanted, went to A&M, was a knucklehead, and now entered the portal and is at LSU kind of with his second chance. And maybe it is Harris. But when I talk to people about Denver Harris, generally the feeling is, man, great physical ability, but you could tell he spent his whole life playing man coverage because he was just a great athlete. He has to learn the position. So light bulb comes on, he learns the position. Maybe Denver Harris is that dude. He certainly is the dude with the highest ceiling, the most upside. But what about this year? Who's the guy that this year is going to play that biggest role for, for LSU? Um... And maybe it's Chestnut because he's the guy that's played the most and has the most skins on the wall. Um, and 247 Sports did a, a piece where they, they, they ranked or, or graded out the best three stars from the 2021 recruiting class. So guys that are rising juniors that were three stars. So now that they've had two years of college behind them, who have been the best, most productive players from the 2021 class that were three stars? And Deuce Chestnut is on that team. In 2021, he was a freshman All-America and third team All-ACC. In 2022, he was honorable mention All-ACC. 
So you're, and, and by the way, in two years at Syracuse, started all 24 games. So here you have a guy that has played a ton of football and has those skins on the wall. Whereas you've got other guys who maybe were more highly recruited coming out of school, but he's the guy that's actually done it at the higher level, at the, co- at the college level. Um, J.K. Johnson, four-star, goes to Ohio State. Great program. Obviously, we know the types of defensive backs they've put out at that program. Johnson redshirted as a freshman in 2021, and last year played in 13 games, made five starts, but was sort of a, a, a contributor, but not a, a dude, not a key guy. And then Zai Alexander, of course, is, is the guy who's played the most, 31 games played at the FCS level. Two-time All-Southland Conference, and he was a second-team FCS All-American a year ago. So the two guys that have played the most are Chestnut and Alexander, but Chestnut's the one that's actually done it at the Power 5 level. So maybe he is the guy that you look at and go, that's probably your best scenario, most likely scenario, of a guy to, ready to step in and be a starter. And for what it's worth, I mentioned Texas A&M had the number one pass defense in the country a year ago. LSU was 32nd. For whatever it's worth, Syracuse was 14th in the country in pass defense, where Chestnut was, as their best defender. Ohio State, where J.K. Johnson was, was 26. Both of those defenses, pass defenses, were better than LSU's a year ago. And Chestnut was a guy who was a start, started every game and was their bell cow in that secondary. If I'm looking at a guy in this LSU secondary this year who might be able to step up and be the the dude at corner that we're all looking around going, who who might it be? I I think that's your guy. I I think it's, it's Deuce Chestnut is the one that I would look at and say, He's probably most likely. Brian Kelly, in back in the spring, was asked about the experience level at cornerback and if they were comfortable with their experience level at cornerback. Here's what Brian Kelly had to say. You know, we have a little bit of experience in a sense that these guys, you know, if, if you take Alexander and you take, you know, you take Denver, those guys have played uh, some football for us. Chestnut's played a lot at Syracuse. So... Again, I hear your question, you know, Garner coming in and, and Jared Bernard Converse had a lot more experience, but I don't feel like we've put ourselves in a position where you're throwing freshmen out there either. So I think we're younger, where we're going to have a little bit more continuity and consistency at the position. And, and I think, you know, I think we've put ourselves in a position where we can develop this talent over the next few years. Big question. Develop the talent over the next few years. Deuce Chestnut is draft eligible. J.K. Johnson is draft eligible. Zy Alexander is draft eligible. Three of the four transfers I just mentioned are all draft eligible. The only one that's not is Denver Harris. Highest ceiling. You might get in for two years. We'll see. But, yeah, you hope those guys stay, and you can develop them. They're not one-year mercenaries. They all have... A, a longer tail possibility in the defensive backfield. But if you're looking for which of the guy might be the most likely to step up and be the leader among the transfers in that secondary at cornerback, my money right now would be would be on Deuce Chestnut coming in from Syracuse. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.